Good morning, welcome to St. Joan of Arc. Good morning. Our gathering song is number 611, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 611. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. Mercy on us, you take away the sins. 
citizens of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Graciously sanctify these gifts, excuse me, draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have recreated and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. All children ages three to nine are invited to come forward for children's liturgy of the word to experience the awe and wonder of God's love. Almighty God, we ask you to send with your abundant blessing on these catechists and on these children. Lord, as they listen to your word, let them learn the true success is being Christ for others. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go now with blessing to A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koheleth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity, the word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you in 
that it is past, or as a watch of the night. If today you hear his voice, harden not your at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Teach us to number days aright that we may gain wisdom of heart return O Lord how long have pity on your servants if today you hear his voice pardon not your heart at daybreak with your kindness that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days and may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours prosper the work of our hands for us prosper the work of our hands if today you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another. Since you have taken off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Lord 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Just returning from a trip to visit with my family in uh, Illinois and Wisconsin, and I got some time to spend with my father, which was, which was a good thing. Though the first thing he told me when I arrived at, the, at, uh, at, his, at his room at the assisted living was, wow, you're losing your hair. <laughs> I said, thanks, God, I just drove, th thanks, thanks, Dad, I just drove 600 miles to hear that. That's okay. No, anyway, it was, it was funny. It was funny. Uh, he's going to be 98 in September, and uh, so I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get up there for the, the birthday party in September, so I took some time off to visit with him and, and the rest of my family. And I was thinking um, about, about, you know, these special birthdays, especially as someone gets older. And as my father is finally admitting, he's old. He's old. <laughs> Um, he's, I think, he's the oldest man at the, uh, at the assisted living place, but a woman has got him beat. She's 103 or something like that. So, uh, at any rate, um, I think birthdays are significant. You know, they're significant milestones. They're things we think about. I think about how proud he is to have lived all of these years, but there are many things, many things, many milestones. When you ask a, a young child, uh, how old they are, many times they'll just hold up the fingers. I'm three years old, they'll say, but maybe just with their fingers. Uh, there's the milestones of the school years, maybe turning five and entering kindergarten, turning 16 and getting a driver's license, turning 18 and voting, turning 21. Well, we know the privileges that are often abused <laughs> at 21. Um, but then I think a time comes in a person's life where they're not so willing to divulge their age. Not sure exactly when this happens, but I did have an aunt that claimed to be 39 and holding. <laughs> but then the opposite happens. People are proud of the age that they have attained. 80 is a great milestone. We have some octogenarians here in our own community. It's a beautiful thing. Birthdays are a time, I think, to look back on our life as well as looking forward. Perhaps some of you have done this. I know that I, I, I tend to do this when I reach a particular birthday or, or something happens. It's a time to reflect. We might ask ourselves questions like, has my life been a success? But I think maybe the deeper question is, what is success? What is success in a Christian sense? Because it can be very different 
from the way that our world looks at success, the way that our community, the way that our, um, our society looks at success. What makes a successful life, a successful career, a successful relationship? Is a person's life successful because they are making huge amounts of money? There's a story about this grandmother who pulled out pictures of her three uh, grandchildren. They're all under the age of two. And she was saying, this one's going to be a rich doctor, and this one's going to be a rich lawyer, and this one's going to be a rich CEO. Is success really based on earnings, on how much money we have or can make? Certainly, it's the way that many people calculate success. How about marriage? What makes a marriage successful? Is marriage successful because a woman and a man have been together for 20, 30, 40, 50 years and have avoided both divorce and homicide? <laughs> marriage anniversaries are important, but do they point to the success of a marriage or to just its longevity? The readings for this Sunday force us to take a closer look at the whole concept of success. In the Gospel reading, this man is convinced that he is a great success because he's this rich farmer, he has more grain that he's ever going to be able to, to use up more possessions, and so he just sits back, rests, eat, drink, and be merry. But that's not success in God's eyes. Not at all. The whole mindset of success being predicated on salary, for example, or the amount we make, is a, Pharisee, is a fallacy, excuse me, very clear to the author of the first reading. He's called Koheleth, it means the preacher. And in this book from Hebrew Scriptures, there's this wonderful insight that he has, though it seems very pessimistic. And now, of course, we've only taken a short bit of the book and heard it today. But I invite you to go home, open up your Bible, and read the book of Ecclesiastes. Look at the way he assesses life. Look at how that, how that goes. Vanity of vanities, he, he says, all is vanity. That's the pessimistic view that he has initially. But read the rest of the book. It's, uh, it's interesting, and it certainly won't take you very long. It's not that long. Uh, doctors, let's, for example, are not successful because they have a prosperous practice, but because they become the healing hands of Christ for the sick. Lawyers are successful not because of a profitable firm, but when they use their learning, their knowledge, their talent, to protect people in the community, to do good for other people and the community to be just, to do what they can to bring about justice. CEOs are successful not if they produce great profits for stockholders and give themselves large bonuses, but if they, are, they use their position of power and authority for the benefit of their employees and community upholding the rights and dignity of workers, paying a just wage, making their communities better. Many times an incorrect view of success is based on honors or titles. You know, is a priest a success because he becomes a monsignor or a bishop? No success is, uh, it, success is not measured by titles. It matters little to me, though I don't imagine I will ever ascend to the, to the honor of the title Monsignor. In fact, I think that that is no longer part of the church, that there is uh, no longer that. But whether keep, people call me, you know, the things associated with these titles, most reverend, very reverend, reverend, I think father is okay. I don't mind being called father. How can we determine if, uh, if a marriage is successful, well, certainly longevity of the marriage does not determine its success. A marriage 
is successful if the man and woman become better people as a result of the marriage. They are called to marriage because that is the place where the Lord wants them to be so that they can develop and use their potential and become holy. That's really the goal of any vocation, whether it's the single life, priesthood, religious life, marriage. It's all this, this journey towards holiness. And for a married couple, it becomes a mutual responsibility to see that each becomes holy that they assist the other in becoming holy. It's a, it's a big thing. It's a big thing to do. It's not the only part of marriage, certainly, but God want, knows that, that uh, people who are called to marriage, that is the place where they will achieve their, they will realize the potential that they have. That's why he calls them to it. I think parenting, um, what, what are successful parents? not certainly how expensive the clothes are that they uh, get, get, their, get their children. I understand that's uh, probably going on right now as the school year approaches, people are getting their children new clothes for, for school. It's not based on that, though. It's really based on, or evidenced in how the children become and are supported in learning their own vocation, learning their own place in life. Parents encourage children to explore their likes, their dislikes, their talents, and to develop these things. I have a nephew who has a couple of daughters, and they are both incredibly into dance. They love to dance. And they're involved in all these dance competitions, all kinds of different things. And they cart them all over the place. They're driving them all to these different competitions, these different things all over the place. And they do that out of love and this desire to develop this talent that they have. It's wonderful. In fact, he even um, he even built a little dance studio in his basement I got a chance to see with a huge mirror, huge, huge mirror on it. Um, got, to, got to watch them perform a little bit in front of the mirror and you know, watch how they're watching each of their movements so carefully and making sure that they're all done precisely right. So, but it's a, a, a beautiful thing to see that potential be realized. So what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, the general concept that our society has of um, success is really a fallacy. Success is not predicated on what we have or what honors we receive, what jobs we hold, etc. Success comes from each of us developing into the person that God wants us to be and encouraging that in others. And for the Christian, it goes even further than that. It is our goal to become Christ for others, to take on the person of Christ, to be Christ for others. That's our goal, which has nothing to do about prestige or title or possessions. It has to do with how we treat each other, how we are Christ for each other, how we are loving as Christ was to us. St. Paul says in the second reading that our lives are hidden with Christ in God in such a way that when Christ appears, we appear. We are to be that presence of Christ for others. In fact, we are to take that on in so complete a fashion that when people see us, they don't see us. They see Christ. That's the goal. That's the goal of the Christian life. So uh, success, true success, I don't think is ever really obtained. It's not a place that we, uh, we, we achieve and then can move on to something else. 
Christian success comes from this striving to be more and more like Christ and continuing that journey throughout our entire life. It's not just a present reality, it's a goal. It's a goal in our Christian life. The goal, when the goal is reached, the life is successful. When every aspect of our life reflects the person of Jesus Christ, that's success. And all else is vanity. Please stand for our symbol of faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, we present our urgent needs, that God protect and purify his holy church, that its work may prosper, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our nation seek not to store up treasures, but to grow rich in what matters to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That every person recognize and resist the greed permeating our culture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that those with bountiful harvest share the, their abundance with the poor and needy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that our community of faith share its material goods and live by spiritual values, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, for those suffering in Kentucky from the flooding, that they may receive the assistance that they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine, that the current hostilities will cease and that the nations of the world will respond generously to assist the needs of those suffering from wounds or the deprivation of the necessities of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May God bless and enrich each and every parish in the diocese with his choicest graces and special protection, that they may be a visible expression of Christ's body at work in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Uh, we offer the Mass today uh, for Victoria and Alfred Fischera. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's close our prayers with the uh, diocese's uh, 50th anniversary prayer. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential hand. Confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth 
your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory song is number 400, Lead Me, Guide Me, number 400. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 326, I Am the Bread of Life, number 326.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For your convenience, baskets are available in the narthex for regular offertory, uh, for the regular offertory collection. Um, registration for the 2022-23 Faith Formation Year will take place by appointment, like last year. Um, the dates are Wednesday, August 17th, and Saturday, August 20th. Uh, the times are listed in the bulletin. Registration this year is $35 per child, with a maximum of $85 per family. Please call uh, Tim Kelly or Ava Tabora to schedule. Their phone numbers are listed in the bulletin. Uh, baptism certificates, this is important, are mandatory at the time of registration. You'll be required to reschedule your appointment if you attempt to register without baptism certificates for your children. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is number 614, Rain Down, number 614. We'll be singing verses 2 and 3. 